Hello, welcome to episode 6 of Math Tutorials. Today is going to be Exponential Growth and Decay. Um, I'll tell you now, a scientific calculator is all you're going to be needing. But it has to be a scientific one. Uh, oh great, that's just what I want. There we go. So, here's just a quick question. A car loses 25% of its value each year, and its initial value is £60,000. I use pounds, you could use dollars, it doesn't really matter. It's a unit of measurement. This could be, not years, this could be seconds, and this could be litres. So, after the first year, the question asks, how much will it lose? So, we need to take 25% off 60,000. Now, most people would just say 60,000 minus and the, do the calculation of 25% of 60,000. But, in essence, all of that is, is 100% of the item, minus 25% of the item, which equals 75%. But we don't want to be using 75%, because that's going to get a bit weird, in case we might have some abstract numbers. So, we'll use naught. 0.75 and then we can just multiply that by 60,000 so the answer to that would be 0.75 I can't do that in my head you can use the calculator I think uh, it's 4,500 4, Now, after the second year, all we have to do is that calculation again, put to that one. So, 0 0.75 times that. And that equals 33,750. And we want to move on to the third year, so another 0 0.75. And we're going to get now 25312.5. Then after the fifth, another 0 0.75. And then another. But why are we doing all this long method? Well, we could just say, well, we know that 25312.5 is... The, th uh, the third year, because this is the fourth year, I'll just put that there. The third year times another 0 0.75. And we know that the third year is just the second year times another 0 0.75. And the second year is the first year times another 0 0.75. And soon, you'll see a pattern that if we have loads of 0 0.75s, we could just put it to the power. So, the fifth year... And we'll notice that the power will always be the same as the year amount for this case. So for the fifth year, it'd be 0 0.75 to the power of 5 times the initial value. And that's how far down this ladder we have to get to the fifth year. Because imagine if the uh, question asks you after the 800th year. Now, of course, if I had a car that's in perfect conditions and it's 800 years old, I'm sure it'd be an antique, but just for this question, if it was 800 years old, that means I'm going to have to do 0 0.75 to the power of 800 times oops, 60,000. So that means one second. Oh, 
Oh god, that's an incredibly small number, but it's about zero point, and then we have ninety, 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 up until we get to about six, seven, one, six, seven, nine, etc., etc., etc. So, say we all have that. Now, let's say, what about if we won the nth year? Well, I think I've already given it away, but it's going to be 0.75 to the power of whatever year on times 60,000. But that's just for this question. Now, that's good and all, equals the year, but what if we have the year, but we need to, uh, we have, so actually, sorry, it's kind of different. So it's the cost at year n in year equals... 0.75 to the power of your year times 60,000. So let's say we already have this cost and we need to find this n. How are we going to go about and do that? So look, there we go. Well, I should express it as this way y equals 60,000 times 0.75 to the power of x. We know that 19. Uh, we know that y is going to be 19.58. Said so here. We just need to find x. So let's plug in 19.58, and now it's algebra. So divide by 60,000, and we get a weird number. It's a very. It's a recurring number, meaning that infinite amount of threes. And we're left with this. Now you can't do just do x roots because then we'd have the x root of this equals 75. Doesn't solve us x. So we use a thing called a log. Well, no, it's just called log. But I just put it, that's how I wrote it down. So it'd be log 0.75 then this number equals x which equals approximately 12. So then your answer is after 12 years the car will be about near close to 20,000. It would be close to 19,000. No, 1,900. Sorry. But, in basically, this is called our base and it's to the power of our index and that equals our answer. So we want to find the index. Log is just an index finder. So we log from our base to our answer, and the way I remember it is that's the base because it's lower, just like a drum kit, bass drum. And we want to do our base, we want to find out what an index finder is, so we just put the answer there. So this is a bit boring now, my voice has dropped. We get this. Um, that's how we find our index. Uh, there's other types that you might see on your scientific calculator. One second. So we do log of our answer equals index. When? So if we don't have anything to put in the base, then that just means by default our base is 10. And was over here, I mistake this is an I. It's actually LN. Don't know who created that word, ln. But all it is is it means this e, and if you remember summation, e is this mathematical use. Also, I think it might be used in physics, and it just means uh, for this case because it's to the power of one. There are like equations where it's to the power of x, and then we do x to the power of n, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this one I just simplified as much as I could, so it's one plus the summing. 
of 1 divided by n factorial. Any number factorial means uh, multiplying all the numbers it and all the numbers below it up to this up to 1. We couldn't say 0 because then it would all be 0. I guess we couldn't say 1, so I'd say probably 2. And there is a function, it's like sigma summation, it's called pi, it's called capital pi. And it doesn't look anything like that, it looks more like that. And we go from a, a number, let's just say 1, to any number using a rule of n. All that is equal to is k factorial because it just means 1 times so replacing that plus with times that's what the difference is so that just means if we have 20 so we have 4 in there 4 factorial just equals 4 times 3 which is 12 times 2 which is 24 times 1 which doesn't actually need to be there. So then 4 factorial is 24. Basically like that. This one is called a, no, this one is called a common log and this one is called a natural log. Here are some rules, I just couldn't be bothered to write them all out. Um, but this isn't all of them. But in essence the product rule, so say we have log a number and we got these two numbers, the answer, it's being multiplied so we can just separate them um, so look here 2, 30, uh, 43 it might be a bit of a hard one to log so we can just do 9 and 27 and they're very easy because we know that 3 to the power of what makes 9 2, 3 squared is 9 and 3 to the power of what makes 27 3 because uh, it's 3 times 3 times 3 which is 9 squared uh, times 3 then it's 2 plus 3 equals 9 no, 5 sorry what was saying uh, this one so that was multiply if they're multiplied here this one is divide then they turn to minus so then 16 so 2 to the power of what makes 16 I already know that it's going to be to the power of 4 just because I know that because this uh, to the log 2 also has a name this one's called the binary log just saying this one's called the natural e this one's called the common 10 this one's called the binary has two um, but that's the 16 the same as 64 divided by 4 but then again if you're going to be working with 2 to the what makes 64 and 2 to the what makes 4 that's easy that's 2 but if you're going to be able to work out 2 to the what makes 64 you might as well be close enough to work out a lower number closer to it like 16 unless this wasn't 2 like it was 3 and it was some weird numbers but I think that's kind of like a bad example but an easy one to understand um, seeing as we're looking uh, the number ty uh, to the power of what makes x to the power of that same thing no there's something different so just means that you take this out and multiply it this is very useful for um, what's it called uh, logarithmic impl uh, implication last episode we did uh, implicit differentiation there's logarithmic differentiation so anyway here 264 the 264 is the same as 2 to the 6, like we found out here. So then it's just 6 times log 2. Any number, so any log times itself is going to be, so any log to log is going to be 1, because that to the power of 1 is that. And if this number, if the answer is 1, then the answer to the log is going to be 0. So if we had log x and this was 1, then this is going to equal, no, if this was 0, 
this was going to equal 1. And if this was 1, 1, then this is going to equal x. I think. Or do I have that incorrect? Maybe I might have that incorrect. Uh, x to the power of something. X to the power of one. Now what's correct? This is zero and this is one because any number to the power of zero is one. And here, uh, any number to the power of one is itself. They are just mixing it all up. Hopefully you could read that. Um, but basically this one is kind of like the inverse of this one. Not that hard to figure. So if you do a square root, it's the same as to the power of a half. If we use that power rule over here, we can just take it out by using this product rule. Uh... Next we have, if you have something like this equation, and you know x and y, but you do not know b, just don't go off and research loads of complicated logs which you have to put together, and ln functions, and all those kind of things. It's, it's really not hard. You just do the x root to find b. Like, here's an, here's an example that I did, um, and the teacher started to do loads of logarithmic a higher than a level logs to find it or maybe it might be an a level this is a level right now but if you, you can use it in GCSE and get good marks and another uh, uh, logarithm you could just use trial and error but that's just effort and takes time in your exams using logs is so much easier so we have the, we know that the, these points pass through the line, this line, y, and we have to solve for all of these. So if x is zero, then as I said earlier, any number to the power of zero is one, which means that one times a is always going to be a. Then y equals a. So we know that y is then five. No, the, the, we know that a is then five. So let's put it into this equation. Now we also know it passes through the point 20.48 and 6, so we put them into the equation, and we get this. Now we solve for b, divide by 5, and here's the part, don't, if you get this, just, just do the sixth root, if you just do the root of that, it's really not, and here's the equation of that, look, so, that equation was uh, y equals 5 times the 6th root of 4.096 to the power of x. That's all it was really. And that just produced this graph. So, there we have it. That's just logarithms. I'm not going to go into derivative of logarithms. I think I'll save that for log logarithmic differentiation. So, basically, like, subscribe, leave a comment. And that's the end of this video. Tell me what I did wrong. And that's it. Goodbye.